Hey, homecoming seems to be the game of the week theme this year. We're at another homecoming. This one in Green Canyon in North Logan as the Wolves play host to Ridgeline. These two teams both tied for second place in Region 11. So the winner gets lone possession of second place. Both teams last week with pretty good performances. Ridgeline with a dominant performance with a 52-22 win over Logan. Almost 500 yards of total offense in that game, but the Ridgeline defense has really kind of been the story as they just fly around and they're limiting teams to less than 20 points per game. Green Canyon needed a drive to end the game. They, had, they threw a touchdown pass, Jake Lundeen, with eight seconds left on the clock to come away with a win over at Bear River by one point in that one. So again, the winner tonight is all alone in second place looking up at Skyview. It should be a good one. Homecoming at Green Canyon on the game of the week. Your password is password, and everything you own is gray, Mike. I thought you liked basic, Mike. That was before I had Wendy's made to crave chicken sandwiches. Now I know I can do better than basic. Upgrade from basic with three new sandwiches on Wendy's made to crave menu. The barbecue chicken sandwich, avocado BLT chicken sandwich, and the sauce and bacon chicken sandwich. At Wendy's, we got you. I need to take a long drive at exactly the speed limit. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. You know, both of these teams are known for their offense. They put up some points. Ridgeline scoring 26 and a half per game. Green Canyon right behind them at about 24 and a half per game. But really it's defense that both of these coaches have been pleased with the last few weeks. We saw Green Canyon just a few weeks ago against Mountain Crest pitch a near shutout in that one and hung on using defense to win. They won last week in a nail biter at Bear River. Pretty good defense, you wonder. You know, how good was the defense? They give up 26 points, but it was good enough. They made stops when they needed to make stops, and that Green Canyon defense seems to be gelling a little bit. Ridgeline made a change a few weeks ago and changed to a 3-4 type of look to utilize speed. And Travis Cox said, we've got the guys to run speed. Let's use our speed, and it's really paid dividends. They're only giving up about 19 points per game. They get to the ball. They cause turnovers. They just wreak havoc out there, and with the kind of offense that Ridgeline has, if that defense really gets going, boy, Ridgeline is hard to beat. Green Canyon's got their hands full tonight. Which defense will step up? You'll find out coming up next on the Game of the Week. Say the word base. Say the word mess. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, peace of mind. 
Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. The Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years. Senior night at Green Canyon for the game of the week as the Wolves get set to host Ridgeline in a big battle here on the game of the week on the Valley Channel. I'm Eric Olson with you as I am every Friday night during football and basketball season with Valley Channel game of the week action. Should be a good one here tonight. Green Canyon won their first couple of games, lost three in a row and have won two in a row now on their way to a four and three record. Two and one in the region. Ridgeline also two and one, two and one in the region. Both teams with their lone loss, region loss to Skyview, who sits atop region 11. As we mentioned, it's senior night here and they're talking about some of the seniors. There's 16 of them on this team. And they're all guys that contribute in various ways. So as they introduce the seniors, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about these two teams and have the kickoff. The game of the week is coming up in just a few moments. Back after this. Nobody does bacon like Wendy's. And now, we're bringing you the Big Bacon Classic. Made with fresh, never frozen beef, topped with hot and crispy bacon. So if you're not getting your bacon cheeseburger from Wendy's, what are you getting? If you want bacon done right, we got you with the Big Bacon Classic. What are you waiting for? All right, we're introducing the seniors here at Green Canyon. One of them they just introduced is Jake Lundeen, the quarterback for this Wolves squad. He can do a little bit of everything. He plays well offensively and defensively. He's one of the key cogs in the Wolves' wheel. He's their leading rusher with 94 carries, 577 yards. He averages 6.14 yards per carry and three touchdowns on the ground. And then last week he threw for over 300 yards and four touchdowns. Quite a game last week. They used a three-minute drive capped by a four-yard touchdown pass from Jake Lundeen to Caden Stewart with eight seconds left to finish off a 27-26 come from behind victory over the Bear River Bears. That one over in Garland. Lundeen, 307 yards, four touchdowns, three of them to Jackson Curtis, another senior. And Jackson Curtis had 145 yards receiving in that game. Ridgeline, on the other hand, they had a dominant performance. That one didn't come down to the last eight seconds. It took them two plays to get in the end zone against Logan. They won 52-22 on that one, 485 total yards. Noah White, 167 yards on the ground. Strat Simmons, 123 yards receiving and two touchdowns. And Jaden Harris, four total touchdowns on the game and he even came up with an interception, if I remember right. Ridgeline won last week, but they actually dropped one, sp one spot in the RPI. They dropped down to number four. Skyview held on to the number one spot, followed by Snow Canyon. Pineview leapfrogged Ridgeline. So Ridgeline drops to four. Park City, Stansbury, Mountain View, Cedar, and then Green Canyon jumped up five spots into the top 10 to number nine. And then Ogden, no, Ogden is number 10. The top 10 teams get a first week bye in the playoffs while everybody else gets to play as the Green Canyon Wolves take the field. The captains out at midfield for the coin toss. Logan's 14. Bear River 11 and Mountain Crest 17 in the RPI this week. And that changes every week. And in the playoffs, here's a little bit of announcement. Usually the playoffs, the first two or three rounds are at home teams and then it goes down to the University of Utah. Not happening this year. This year you've got all the way through the semifinals are gonna be with the home team. So if you've got Ridgeline, Skyview, Logan, Green Canyon, Mountain Crest, anybody in, in the Valley stays alive and gets to the semis, they could be playing at home. And then the championship game actually down in at Dixie State University is where it's set for, down in St. George. 
So if somebody from here ends up in the title game, they got a long way to go. And if one of those teams from down in that southern Utah region ends up in the title game, they'll have home field advantage. But there's a lot of other teams in between. Ogden good this year. Stansbury, a team to watch out for. Park City as well. 4A is wide open. Skyview, you have to think, is one of the favorites. And this team in white right here, Ridgeline, another one of those favorites that really not a lot of people are talking about, not as many people as you would think. They are a complete football team. Kicking off will be Green Canyon, and they're a team that seems to be kind of finding their stride. They've pulled out some close games the last few weeks. They've learned how to win. And Coach Craig Anders has been pretty pleased with that fact and how they've learned how to win and, and make winning plays. And they really showed that against Bear River last week. Bear River, I think they've lost three games by less than the touchdown and like right at the end. In fact, they, they really could have beat this Ridgeline team. Well, Bear River's another team that might be able to sneak up on somebody in the playoffs. We're underway as Lundeen kicks it into the band in the north end zone. Ridgeline will be going north to south. No wind or anything to speak of here tonight. Just a beautiful October evening. First weekend in October. Plenty of color in the canyon coming through. And Caden Cox, 124 completions on 181 attempts, 1,686 yards, 14 touchdowns, only two interceptions. He completes almost seven of 10 passes. DeMooney's gonna go in motion. They're gonna give to him and send him around the left end. DeMooney picks his way out for about four. Let's see where they say he stepped out. He leaned forward and he does get about four yards. DeMooney's a weapon. DeMooney's explosive, but team's game plan for him, and so they've had to go other places, and Strat Simmons has really come up big. Noah White was the focus last week as they ran the ball. Looks like tonight they're going to throw it. Nope, they're going to run out of throwing formations as White gets a little inside handoff as he goes into motion into the backfield, and he picks up seven yards and a first down. So Travis Cox with a different look. And actually, Travis Cox is the defensive coordinator. He's got another offensive coordinator that's calling the plays. They send to Mooney in motion and give instead to White, and White is wrapped up for a two-yard loss. Regan was there. Number 11, Helstern leads this team in tackles with 41. Coates with four sacks and Compton with two interceptions are the defensive leaders for Green Canyon. Second and 12 as White lines up behind Cox in the pistol. They're going to send Harris in motion. He motions into the backfield. They're going to hand it off to White. White upended as he gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Third and long coming up for Ridgeline. Green Canyon stuffing the run early. At least the run from a regular run formation. They give White a yard. And it's third and 11. Simmons and White to this side to Mooney. And two other receivers to the far side, I can't see who. So Cox in the backfield all by himself. And now the back judge is on his five second count and they're gonna have to hurry. Four, five, and they snap it just as he's reaching for his flag. Over the middle, down goes the receiver, it's Harris. He's tripped up and the flag comes in from that back judge. He just stepped on his foot. The, the trailing defender stepped on his foot and he went down as the ball was coming there. And the Green Canyon folks and coaching staff don't, does, do not like it, but they'll call that 100% of the time. It's unfortunate. But that's always the call on third and 11. They convert by, by a penalty. So 
Cox has White with him in the backfield again. Green Canyon looking like they might blitz. They're going to bring an extra rusher. Cox unloads over the middle, and DeMooney cut it inside, and Cox threw it outside the hash marks. And DeMooney had two wolves hot on his heels, incomplete. Harris into the game. And he and White are gonna, he and DeMooney are gonna stay in the backfield as White splits wide. Murdoch out there with him. Cox is gonna keep this one. He falls on the turf. Let's see who's got it. Looks like Ridgeline. Two yards for Caden Cox. Just about said Travis. And it's third and eight. The run game was big last week. For Ridgeline. And it's been tough sledding here in the early going, but Ridgeline's got a third and eight at the 49 yard line, their own 49. Green Canyon rushing three. They throw quick to the edge and it's incomplete. Drop an eight, rushing three. And Ridgeline is going to have to punt. As Caden Cox goes 0 for 2 on Ridgeline's first possession. And Green Canyon wants a timeout because Ridgeline came up like they were going to just go for it. Green Canyon says, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. They had Curtis, Jackson Curtis, back to receive a punt. Ridgeline comes out in their regular offense. We've seen that in Travis Cox's first year as a, as a coach. He is ultra aggressive, defensively and offensively. They are not afraid to go for it. And I think they feel like the way their defense is playing this year that, that so what if we turn it over? And they feel like their offense can get it back if it, if it, if it is a problem. So fourth down and eight. Let's see if they try to get Green Canyon to jump and get some cheap yards. Three receivers to this side. They're going to run it. Here's the quick inside to Simmons, and Simmons catches on this plant and picks up big yardage. 13 yards on fourth down, and Ridgeline keeps the drive alive. Strat Simmons picking up where he left off last week, 100-plus yards receiving, and he hits that one. They were playing loose on him, and he just cut it inside. And it was an easy pitch and catch for Ridgeline as they pick up the first down on fourth and eight. Under nine minutes to play in the first quarter. First possession for either team as DeMooney swings out. A lot of Green Canyon players converging on DeMooney. He picks up about three. Simmons to this side. Webb, DeMooney, and Harris to the far side with White in the backfield. See if they give it to White. Let's see if they spread the defense out. And now flag. And somebody moved. They threw it right at the feet of the guard, Damian Bamey. Wonder if he just twitched, maybe the center as well. But it's a five yard penalty. And now it'll be second and 13. So Ridgeline kind of do this against Skyview, right? And came out with a grinded out eight minute drive to start the game. This has been kind of a grinder as well, but they've taken off about not quite three and a half minutes. Here's the quick throw over the middle. Murdoch cut. 
brought down by Compton. Ooh, that hurts. And Murdoch slow to get up. Nine yards on the completion. It's third and four. Cox in trouble, gets it away. Over the middle, caught by Webb. Touchdown. No, that's Murdoch. No, I think that's Webb, five. Murdoch, six. That looks like Webb. Cox put it on him. Webb reached out, snagged it, and scored. From 33 yards out. PAT is up and good. 7-0 Ridgeline early in the first quarter. Two for three on third down and one for one on fourth down. A fourth and eight, the big play on that drive. That one went into the end zone, and they're going to let him return it. And he returns it out to the 25-yard line. That's Compton. He's actually out to the 26. They thought he was in the end zone. They usually don't let him bring it out. 26-yard return by Compton. And Green Canyon gets their first touch of the football. They had to wait almost four minutes into this first quarter. 8.06 to play in the first, and Jake Lundeen takes the field. Lundeen is going to keep it. Got himself a little bit of an opening off the right side, and he's cut down after a gain of five. Ridgeline does, or excuse me, Green Canyon doesn't huddle up. They just kind of muddle huddle there and get the play, and they're right up to the line. Regan split wide to this side, and this time Lundeen hands it off to Peterson. He's going to be short of the first down. It's third and two. Peterson's going to be in the backfield with Lundeen again. Two by two on the receivers. Hand it off to Peterson. He's got a first down as he's up near the 40-yard line to the 39. In fact, they're going to give him the 40. That's a six-yard run. First down, Wolves. Trailing 7-0. They get a new set of downs at the 40-yard line. Three-man front for Ridgeline. They're just going to rush the three. Lundin takes a look and then runs it. They're trying to dig the ball out of there, and he's still up. And he pushes the pile almost nine yards. Ridgeline's trying to pull the ball and strip the ball. Meanwhile, Lundin just hanging on and still churning, and he picks up nine yards. Second and one. Peterson, the lone setback. Give to Peterson. First down and more. He's into the secondary down to the 40-yard line. And a sideline warning flag on the far side. Going to put him at the 41, so it ends up being a 10-yard run by Peterson. It's a flag on the far side. It's going to be a sideline warning. One of the Ridgeline coaches was right out almost on the field. They threw the flag at his feet. I think it was Coach Cox. 
Next time it's a penalty. The ridge line doing it on the ground so far. A couple of first downs. And they're at the ridge line 41, trailing 7 0. Lundeen gives to Peterson. Peterson runs into a wall. After about a yard, he spins his way for one more. 21 yards on four carries for Peterson. And he'll head for the sidelines for a breather. It looks like Ridgeline's going to just rush three. They're trying to maintain probably their rushing lanes and keep Lundeen hemmed in. They're not really pinning their ears back and coming after him. That's when he can really hurt you. So watch and see if those ends come upfield and that nose tackle just kind of stays in the middle. And Lundeen's going to keep and he's upended after a gain of two. So it'll be third down and medium. Third about six. Regan to this side, Baker to the far side. Christiansen in the backfield. Curtis split to this side as well. They give it to Christiansen. He never really got a hold of the ball. And he's tripped up after a gain of two. It's going to be fourth and three. Ridgeline went for it on fourth down. Let's see what Green Canyon does right now. Looks like they're going to do it. Lundeen's their punter. So he's going to stay on the field regardless. Fourth and three, about three and a half. Lundeen's got a man, it's knocked down. Oh, he had a man. Wide open. Stewart standing at the 29 yard line and it was knocked down at the line of scrimmage and Ridgeline gets the ball back as Lundeen's first pass of the game falls incomplete after it's batted down. 4.24 to play in the first quarter. Ridgeline leads 7 0. They're back on the field. Last home game for Green Canyon. Next week they're at Logan. And then they are going to rest up until the playoffs, which start after the fall break. Cox with two running backs in the backfield. Four-man rush. Cox with plenty of time. Now he escapes out to his left and unloads. He's got a receiver downfield, and the defender was right there to make sure he didn't come up with it. Cox started the game 0 for 2. Then he completed four in a row before that one, before that drop. Or incompletion, not so much a drop. Second down and 10 for Richline. Webb, Simmons, and DeMooney to the far side, and Harris will be your lone receiver split to this side. Now Harris is not going to, or excuse me, it's Murdoch on the far side with Webb and, or with Simmons and DeMooney. They go over the middle to Simmons. That went a little tall for him. Another third down coming up for Ridgeline. They've been in third down situations three times. This is their fourth. They were two, two for three on third down on that first possession, and then they converted on fourth and eight. A bunch formation to this near side. See if they screen it out to DeMooney. Nope, they're going to hand it to Harris, and he's in trouble in the backfield. Down he goes, and a loss of about four. Three where they spot it, and Ridgeline will punt now. Green Canyon doing a good job against the run here tonight. Nine yards on six carries for Ridgeline. Line. 
Murdoch's the punter. Murdoch boots this one. Takes a hop. Man was right there. It was Jackson Olsen was right there to slow down the return man, Curtis. But he got away from him and gained a couple of yards before he's run down by the rest of the Ridgeline players. Three twenty-two to play in a seven-nothing first quarter. Ridgeline with the early lead. Green Canyon with the ball. Peterson joins Lundeen in the backfield. Regan, the outside receiver to this side. Keep your eye on him. They're going to give up the middle to Peterson, then fake the little bubble screen. Uh, see what the defense does with it. Peterson picks up three. Forty-two yards on eight carries offensively for Green Canyon. So they're running the ball better than Ridgeline is. But Ridgeline's been able to pass the ball a little bit, and that's been the difference. 33-yard touchdown pass. Here's the little screen. Oh, and a big hit. Big hit. Put on out there by Stewart. Man, on the screen, he picks up good yardage from the 28 out to the 38, 10 yards. And he put his head down. You could hear it clear up here. That'll leave a mark. First down, and Lundin's going to throw again. Three-man rush. They're just trying to keep him in the pocket. Now he breaks out of it. Spins forward, picks up a couple. You can see that. What's, that's what Ridgeline's trying to do. Ridgeline's going to say, fine, Jake Lundin. We know you can beat teams with your feet. You go ahead and see if you can beat us with your arm. They're just rushing three, dropping eight. The ends are coming up field. They're trying to form like a little horseshoe around him, and the, the nose guard is just kind of staying in the middle, just trying to keep him contained. Now they're going to bring an extra rusher, and Murdoch gets the tackle on two-yard gain for Peterson. Third down and six. With under two minutes to play in the first quarter. See if Ridgeline brings extra rushers this time. They're creeping a linebacker or two up. They're throwing over the middle, and it's too tall for Stewart. Lundin faked the give, pulled it out, threw it over quick to Stewart. And Lundin has to just dial in the dial in the sights a little bit more. He had him. He just overthrew him. A little too tall. And it's fourth down. Lundin, the quarterback, also the punter. And he's back like he's going to punt. This would be a dangerous place to fake it, but that's what they're going to do. Nope, it's a rugby style. Simmons comes up and then just lets it go over his head. And Lundin gets a good bounce, and it's inside the 10-yard line down to about the 7. Yeah, see you. Lundin, how he can keep the defense honest. They can't really come after him. And if they sit back too much, he ran to the edge. And then he kicked it away. And I'm wondering if he has that option, depending on what he sees. And it'll be first and 10 for Ridgeline at the 8-yard line. They lead 7-0, 125 to play here in the first quarter. Ridgeline 5-1 on the season. They're in the top 20 in the all-classification rankings that the Deseret News does. Turn and give to White. And that's the best just straight up the middle run of the night for Ridgeline. When they've gotten their yardage, they've done it from different formations. White's going to pick up six yards on that run. Under a minute to play now in the first quarter. 
second and four for Ridgeline. Fake the give on the sweep and give it up inside. And White's got the first down. As he picks up five more yards. And Ridgeline on the move. Meaning they're moving quickly. They're only at the 20 after starting at the eight. There's 36 seconds to play in this quarter. Hand it off again, some yardage to the outside. Another eight yard run. And White stays in bounds. He's up to 25 yards on six carries. Bridge line will snap it again, I believe, here in this first quarter. Let's see, they're not in much of a hurry. 10 seconds left in the quarter. Now they come to the line. Cox looks behind him, two seconds. One and they snap it. Give it to, looks like Harris. And he's stood up right at the 30 yard line. That'll be the last play of the first quarter. And it's a first down. First down for Ridgeline. They'll switch ends of the field. We'll come back in a seven nothing ball game for the second quarter. Ridgeline leads Green Canyon. Give it a free nachos when they bought a large pizza. They just got a mention to us to say, we here they are in the Cash Valley Channel. And look at that deliciousness that they're gonna get right here. A free nacho. So anybody following the Valley Channel, you come in, you say, we saw this ad on the Valley Channel and we'd like to claim the free nachos. Say, so we're gonna give you a free nacho. You earn your nachos right there, automatic. <laughs> Seven nothing Ridgeline leads after the first quarter here at Green Canyon. Eric Wilson along with you as we get ready to start the second quarter. And I'll tell you what, we just saw a factory pizzeria ad. If you got up and went to the bathroom, went to get a drink or something, and you missed that factory pizzeria ad, they fill you in on what you missed. We don't always t tell people what they missed on a commercial, right? Nobody wants to know what they missed on a commercial. Y you missed free nachos. If you get a pizza at the factory pizzeria, you get free nachos along with it. What better thing on a Friday night? Do your stomach a favor. Get a pizza late. Follow it up with nachos and a big Coke. Crazy dreams all night long. The factory pizzeria, they're open late. All right, the teams are out on the field, and they're ready to play, and we're doing some kind of presentation there in the middle of the field. Didn't see what that was, but I'm sure it was a... A good cause. I'm busy looking at those first quarter numbers. 58 yards passing for Cox and a touchdown. Um, 29, 33 yards rushing for Ridgeline as a team. Now they got all the Little League teams out there. It's not halftime. <laughs> Both of the teams are ready to play. Cox is three of seven, four of seven for that 58 yards and a touchdown. At 33 yards of that went to Webb for that touchdown for Green Canyon. They had 44, 46 yards rushing on 11 attempts. Peterson with 26, 18 for Lundeen on four carries. Lundeen's one for three for 10 yards. That went to Stewart. Little League team out there, future, future Wolves that they were recognizing there. All right, now the big kids back out on the field. It's first and 10 at the 31-yard line. This drive started at the 8 for Ridgeline as they lead by a touchdown, 7-0. Turn and give to White. White, nothing up the middle, so he pops it out to his right. Picked up about three. Thank you. 
Webb, the receiver to the near side. Two to the far side, DeMooney, one of them. And DeMooney's going to go in motion. They're going to give it to White. White through the middle. Big yardage out near the 50-yard line, about the 47. 15 yards. Nine carries, 48 yards for White all of a sudden. Green Canyon's kept that running game bottled up until the last possession. Here's Harris on the slant. He can't haul it in, then he kicks it up in the air. It's nearly intercepted. Second down. Cox had him. He had to go down a couple of rungs on the ladder to, gra to grab it. Popped out of there as he's going to the ground. But he probably should have come up with that. Simmons now will spread it out wide to this side. Three receivers this side, one to the far side. White's going to stay in. They're going to run a screen. And boy, do they have blockers and do they have room. Look out, White undercut. No, that's not White. That's Eck undercut after a gain of 12. A good tackle out there, or that one may go the distance. Hand it to Eck. And Eck picks up four. So Eck giving White a spell. Eck heads to the sideline with a catch and a carry. Miles Eck, the senior, he's a running back. He plays some defensive back. Here's the give to White. He's got a big opening. Bumps it to the outside, and he's down near the 30-yard line at the 29, a gain of eight and another first down. And all of a sudden, White's up to five and a half yards per carry. Ten carries, 56 yards. And the Riverhawks are rolling. DeMooney in motion. They're going to hand it to him. He's got blockers. He's got a hole off the edge. He's got a flag as he picks up 12 yards. And that's a hold nine yards down the field. So instead of first and 10, it's probably going to be first and 11 for Ridgeline. Boy, they had some blocking downfield. He had the edge. Harris was down there. Or maybe Harris is 28 and White is 23. It may have been White. And they call holding on Ridgeline. The flag was down at about the 21-yard line, and they've moved it back to about the 24. So to go back to the 34, it'll be first down. First and 14. And for Ridgeline, their first penalty of the night. Webb and Mooney split out wide to the right. Harris is in a little halfback spot. Cox is going to throw it out to Webb. Webb on his feet, spinning down to the 24-yard line. 10-yard gain. Two catches, 43 yards, and a touchdown for Webb. This is a solid receiving core. They've got weapons everywhere. Webb, sure-handed. DeMooney, a game breaker, and Strat Simmons, you can always count on him. Cox has lots of room to this side if he wants to run. He's steady, unloads. Webb! Touchdown! <laughs> 24 yards, and Cox has another touchdown to Webb. Three catches, 67 yards, two touchdowns for numero cinco, Evan Webb. And Murdoch on for the PAT.
Murdoch punches it through and it's 14-0. Ridgeline 9-12 to play in the first half. started Palmer Home Furnishings 17 years ago on 10th West and we started Mountain Ridge Furniture a couple of years ago out here on the highway in Providence and recently kind of out of the blue not really planned we had somebody purchase our building on 10th West. The result was for us to merge the two businesses and bring it all into one out here in Providence. Three blocks south of Macy's out here on the highway you can't miss it if you drive on the highway in Providence you can't miss it. 14-0 Ridgeline with the two touchdown lead after a 98-yard drive. And this one goes into the end zone and Compton had dropped it and then it bounced into the end zone and they stop him. <laughs> 92-yard drive for Ridgeline. Capped by the 24-yard touchdown pass from Cox to Webb. Caden Cox had loads of running room in front of him as he broke out of the pocket to the left side. And he pulled up just short of the line of scrimmage and unloaded to Webb. Looked like he was throwing it into a little bit of traffic, which he was, and Webb came out of there with it. What did I say about him being sure-handed? Lundin's gonna roll to his right, looking and then throwing it away. Second and 10 for the Wolves. Lundin fakes the throw as they give it up the middle to Peterson. He picks up four, it's gonna be third and six. Peterson with 30 yards rushing on seven carries. Green Canyon is one for three on third downs in that first quarter. This is their first possession of the second quarter. 8.45 to play in the first half and the clock rolls on third down and six. A long six. Lundin against the three-man rush. Throws underneath to Baker. Big target. And this one's going to be close. I think he's just a little bit shy, but let's see where they spot him. Now nah, they're going to give it to him. Give it to him out to the 31-yard line, a pickup of seven and a first down. And Baker is a big old target. Still a three-man rush. Lundin over the middle. He's got his man. It's another first down. 15 yards to Stewart. Lundin, three of six now for 32 yards. Green Canyon on, on the march. Give it to Peterson. Peterson on the quick hitter. Stays chopping and he's gonna have a first down, 11 yards. And they let that play go on a long time before they finally blew the whistle. Looked like he was stopped at about the 44 for a couple of seconds. And he just kept churning his feet and eventually the pile kept moving and he picks up 11 yards and a first down. Nearly six yards per carry for Peterson, 41 yards on eight totes. Lundin trying to break out. They keep him hemmed in, but he finds an opening. Lundin to the 40, knocked down there for a gain of five. They had him hemmed in. He still broke out. Green Canyon hurries to the line of scrimmage, trailing by two touchdowns. They need to come up with something here to get back into this ball game. Ridgeline staying with that three-man rush, dropping eight. 
Green Canyon's responded by running the football and running it pretty well. They're going to throw it again. Lundin unloads. DeMooney was breaking on that one. But Curtis hauls it in. It's a first down, a pickup of seven. Curtis with his first grab. Ball at the 33-yard line of Ridgeline. Lundin in trouble. Reverses out. Picks up yardage down to the 30. Oh, he picked up three. <laughs> Looks like a Three Stooges movie. He's <laughs> back there. You, you expect to hear him go, woo, 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 as he's running around trying to get out of there. Spinning, turning, stopping, starting. Everybody trying to grab him, and he still slips out of there for three yards. Going to give to Christiansen. Christiansen finds an opening. And another tough run down to about the 25-yard line. Gain of five. It'll be third and short. Ridgeline says, beat us with Lundin's arm. Or, or excuse me, beat us with the run. We're not going to let Lundin beat us with his arm. We're dropping eight. And Green Canyon saying fine. And they're picking up yardage on the ground on third and two. Lundin tosses it out there, and it's almost picked. Just off the hands of Baker, who was standing out there. It almost surprised Baker, I think, because Lundin took a step like he was going to run. I think stopped and threw it to Baker. And Baker, whoa, hey, stuck his hand out there. They're lucky it wasn't picked, and it's fourth and a yard. Now Ridgeline creeping guys up near the line of scrimmage. And the officials blow it dead because Ridgeline wants to talk about it. 4.50 to play in this first half. It's 14-0 Ridgeline and a gigantic fourth down and one at the Ridgeline 25-yard line for Green Canyon. Caden Cox has thrown a couple of touchdown passes. Ridgeline not able to run the ball very well early, but late in the first quarter and in the last drive there in the beginning of the second quarter that spanned those two quarters, they looked like they'd hit on something and were able to run the ball better. And look at this formation, everybody up tight. Lundin's going to keep it, and they're going to push him, and he's going to gain. He's going to get the yard, the line to gain. It looks like pretty easily. He needed a yard, about a yard and a half, and he got close to three. The drive stays alive for the Wolves. Three wide to the left, one to the right. It's Regan all alone to his right. It's Peterson in the backfield with Lundin as Lundin looks to the sideline. As we're under four and a half to play in the first half. Peterson switches sides in the backfield. Lundin looking to throw, look out. He avo avoids pressure, unloads, has a man and he's wide of him. He had somebody. And he missed him. It was close to the line of scrimmage, but he was still about a yard behind it. He kind of pulled up to throw to him. I wonder if he was worrying about that or if that's just he saw him. Give to Peterson, nothing there. And it's going to be third and ten. 
Green Canyon is two for six on third downs, one for one on fourth down. This is the seventh third down opportunity for Green Canyon. At the Ridgeline 24 yard line with 340 to play in the first half. Lundin, lots of time, looking over the middle. It was nearly picked and then it was taken away by Regan. Regan just wrestled it away from the defender. 15 yards, 14 yards, and a first down. Regan with his first grab of the night. First and goal, just inside the 10. got Baker as an H-back. They're going to give it to Peterson, who angles Baker's way and picks up about three. Ten carries, 44 yards now for Peterson. Lundeen's got seven for 29. Chris Jansen, two for seven. 80 yards rushing so far in the first half for Green Canyon. 53 in the air. Lundin's going to the air. Now he's in trouble. Dances out of it. Gets down near the five yard line. About the six is where they're gonna spot him. He picked up two, it's third and goal from the six. As the clock moves toward that two minute mark. Third and goal from the six. Three-man rush, dropping eight, not a lot of room for receivers, and Lundin in big trouble. Steps out of it, unloads. Man in the back of the end zone, and it's right through his hands. He had a man, Peterson, and he couldn't come up with it. Lundin's like the two-year-old that escapes from your bathtub. All full of soap and everything. He's running through the house and you're trying to catch him. I mean, they had him dead to rights. And he got away and it should have been a touchdown pass. Peterson in the backfield and Lundin on fourth and goal from the six. 2.04 to play in the first half. And Ridgeline wants another timeout. There's not enough, there's not a lot of room down there. In a goal-to-go -go situation, if you're dropping eight guys in coverage, they don't have to cover much, right? They don't have a lot of field to cover. There's not a lot of space, so it's difficult. You're going to throw for it down here. They've already converted on one-fourth down on this drive. They've driven 74 yards in their best possession of the night. And with 2.04 to play in the first half, the fourth and goal at the six. And there's a lot of game left. And Green Canyon has come from behind to win some games this year. But you kind of feel like, boy, if they don't punch it in here, that could be real trouble for the Wolves. Here we go. On fourth and goal from the six. Looks like another three-man rush for Ridgeline. Three to the left. Regan's on this side. Let's see if they run the run a jump ball to him. Green Canyon wants a timeout. I'm wondering if they're trying to get. Ridgeline to jump and pick up five easy ones, or it would be half the distance. It'd be three yards. And then it's fourth and three instead. Hey, Bear River and Mountain Crest are at the half. 0-0, zero, zero, the score in that one. Mountain Crest has had trouble with their offense this year. They have for a couple of years. But I, 
the last few games they found their defense, and I think they found it against this Green Canyon team. We did that game. I think that final was 10 to 6. Mountain Crest, last play of the game, stopped at the one yard line. But defensively, they played really well that game. I understand against Skyview, they played pretty well defensively, and tonight they're playing well defensively against Bear River. Late in the first quarter, Skyview was leading Logan 7 0. And now Green Canyon has changed their mind. And they've got a kicker out on the field. It's Carson Gerber. And they're going to see if they can get some points. Gerber wasn't even watching. Oh, they're running a fake. What's going on? Everybody's stopping and looking to the sideline. They snapped the ball. The holder said it. They all look to the sideline. Everybody just stopped. And then the holder jumped up. Said, man, we're going to throw it. I don't know if it was a design fake. Either way, Ridgeline gets the ball back. Green Canyon comes up with nothing after that long drive. In fact, they lose 22 yards. Wow, not really sure what was going on there. If that was designed that way or if there was really some sort of communication problem. The ball had already been snapped, so Green Canyon couldn't take a timeout. Webb's going to throw it. He's going to throw it to Cox, and Cox is going to take off. Cox hustles his way up to the 39-yard line. He picks up 11. They were looking downfield, nothing was there, so they threw back to Cox, who nobody was even near him. White picks up a couple. Man, that's a big one for Green Canyon. If they put points on the board there, they get the ball to start the second half. Cox with a lot of time. Throws it underneath. He's got Simmons. Simmons steps out of bounds right near midfield. He's got eight yards on a first down. Ridgeline on the move again. They're at midfield leading 14 0, 109 to play in this first half. Green Canyon just had a great opportunity. They were at the six yard line, couldn't punch it in. Went for a field goal. There was all sorts of mass confusion on the play, and they end up losing 22 yards and come up with no points. Here's the give to White. White dancing in the backfield, steps out of one tackle, picks up a yard. Good job by the Wolves. No running lanes for White. Under a minute now to play in this first half. Ridgeline in a hurry. Webb and DeMooney to this side. Two backs for Caden Cox. He throws it to Strat Simmons. Simmons picks up five. Simmons three catches for 26 yards. Cox up to 117 yards. And eight of 11 passing. Two touchdowns. Third and five. Cox gets rid of it quick. And one of the Green Canyon, I think it was Baker, stepped right in front of it. He was going the other way and he couldn't come up with it. Fourth down. Nice play out there defensively by the Wolves. And Caden Cox got away with one. 41 seconds to play in the half. And the Mooney and Webb will go to the far side and Strat Simmons now this side. Harris is going to join the Mooney and Webb. White 
He's at a wing position. Fourth and five. Unloading quick and a first down. Evan Webb, seven yards. Thirty-seven seconds to play in the half. Fourteen nothing Ridgeline. They're looking for more. Now Webb and Demuni to this side. See what the River Hawks do with it. Cox with a lot of time. Now he's in trouble and he goes down. Regan. A three yard loss. And Ridgeline, if they take a timeout, I think that's their last one. First sack of the night by Ridgeline. And it comes with 29 ticks on the clock. And it's going to be second down and 13. Interesting first half, even though Ridgeline's pitching the shutout. 14 nothing. Green Canyon's had their opportunities, and they haven't been able to put points on the board. No turnovers in this game so far. Ridgeline up by two scores. They want some more. Second down and 13. They got pressure on Caden Cox that time. They need to do it again. V has time to look around. He's deadly. Three-man rush. Cox unloads in a hurry. He's got Webb over the middle. Webb down to the 24-yard line. 16 yards. They kill it. Eleven of fifteen for Cox, 140 yards. A couple of touchdowns. Webb has 90 yards on five catches, and he grabbed both of those touchdowns, and here they are in scoring range again. Down at the 25-yard line. Now they bring late pressure. Cox unloads, has a man, and it's a little bit too long to the outside. For DeMuni. DeMuni had a step. There were three Wolves trailing him. Cox would have had to put it right there. It was just a little wide of him. He couldn't reach out and get it. And it's third and ten. If they kicked a field goal from here, it'd be about a 42 yarder, and that's within Murdoch's range. Bringing pressure from the backside. Cox unloads, looking downfield, and this one out of bounds. And here comes a late flag. And I don't know if it's on offense or defense because Simmons ran into the defender and kind of pushed him. And the defender made contact with Simmons. What's the call going to be? And they're going to talk about it. By the looks of that one, it could go either way. Let's see what they call. Pass interference on the defense. It looked like Simmons kind of found that defender and ran into him, gave him a little shove. But by the same token, they ran into each other. Defender ran into him. Ten seconds to play in this first half. And it's first and 10 at the 13 yard line now. So that's a first down by, by a penalty for Green Canyon. Or excuse me, Ridgeline. 10 seconds, no timeouts left for Ridgeline. 
Here comes some pressure. Cox gets rid of it to the sideline. Incomplete down at the five-yard line. Six seconds to play in the half. Now they're going to bring Murdoch out. It'll be about a 30-yard attempt right down the middle, and this is well within his range. We saw him hit one from 40-plus last week. Punches this one right through. 17-0, one second left on the first half clock, so Ridgeline will have to kick it off. A little bit slower finger down up in the booth, and we're heading for the halftime show. Ridgeline will have to kick it off. They'll probably squib it down there. The 30-yard field goal for Ridgeline puts them on top 17-0. Murdoch's going to squib it. It's going to be picked up at the one-yard line. Nothing. Return back to the 10, and that's the half. 17-0. Ridgeline leads Green Canyon as we head for the locker rooms. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. It takes determination, strategy, training, most of all in your mind to get the idea that you can do it and then actually do it. Going into sophomore year, I was ranked second in the state and halfway through my 55, there was just excruciating ripping pain up my hamstring. I instantly knew that my season was over. My orthopedic surgeon said it would take up to nine months to recover my coach was telling me I might not run the same way again. I'm so inspired by people who say, I'm not going to let this stop me. I'm just going to let this help me. So I wrote a poem, never give in, never give up to the thought of impossible, because if you pull a few strings, you can still make it happen. Every chance I got, I would hop on the treadmill, and if I could go two miles an hour, three miles an hour, I started Olympic weightlifting and working fiercely with the ambition in my heart that I was going to come back better than ever. It turned into, well, hold on, now it's getting fun. I never thought I would have a daughter who was an Olympic weightlifter, but Laura's always had a quiet determination of whatever happens, it doesn't matter, just persevere forward and give it your all. When I was in eighth grade, a student collapsed with sudden cardiac arrest, and I wanted to make sure that when it happened again, we as a school would be prepared. So I met with my local representative, who was kind enough to help me draft a bill that I testified for at the State House. I was just thrilled that someone could be 15 years old and be that passionate about anything legislative. And I can't recall ever having someone get such a loud round of applause after she testified. Being able to affect the change is inspiring and empowering. You have to know that the pain that you took in practice and the times you did things that you didn't want to do is going to pay off. And by doing that, realizing that nothing is impossible. you've been missing bring back cash valley hearing and audiology dr staines i suppose along with everybody else in my age group i am now getting bombarded on a daily basis it seems in the mail with um hearing aid advertisements coming through the mail you i don't know if you get 
really I just throw them away because I would say if I needed a hearing aid here is where I'd come to see you are people in danger with these things I mean are you going to get a product that's legitimate are you dealing with real people or is it a scam <laughs> You, you usually get a product that it's a, d a decent product, uh, but is it fit for you? Everybody's a little bit different, and, right. and we want to be able to have you come in and find out what works best for your individual needs. Okay. Uh, some of these hearing aids that you can buy through the mail are not really anything but amplifiers. They, they okay. turn things up, but simply not turning things up, that doesn't solve the problem. Okay. We need to personalize the hearing aid to your individual loss. And, and make it so what frequencies need to be boosted are boosted and those that don't need to be boosted aren't. So just turning up the volume on something isn't actually going to fix the problem? It does not. No, no we need to make it so it, it matches exactly what your hearing is. I had no idea it was that complicated because, you know, on the street people might think yeah I can send away for one and it's generic and it'll work for everybody but that really isn't the case. It really isn't. No. Uh, and you also see a lot of times uh, advertisements that say come in for our free trial. We're, we're offering a trial research and come and give us your opinion on this hearing aid and we'll give you a discount. Right. We're doing a special study with the manufacturer. Well the manufacturers already have their study done. Right. They wouldn't be offering it to somebody here. They, they, they have their own research facilities that they do these studies at. Okay. And so the study is how many hearing aids they can sell. Yeah. It, it's not a real study. Yeah. And so again, it's just down to people pushing a product that could be right for A, B, and C, but is not anywhere right for the rest of the alphabet people. Uh, but coming here to Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, you are going to find out exactly, if you have a hundred different people walking through in a day, you're going to find the exact right uh, and some of them may not even need a hearing aid and of course you're never going to push no, that. I do not do that. That's one thing that I pride myself in is I'm not a salesman. Right. <laughs> I take care of people, help them meet their needs and, and take care of them and yeah. do what we can that way but I will not push or pressure anybody to purchase a hearing aid. Yeah. So even though you might be tempted, even though you get these in the mail like I do, don't be tempted because ultimately it may not be at all what you personally need. Come on down to Cash Valley Hearing and see Dr. Danes and he will find you exactly what you individually need. Thanks Dr. Danes. Thank you. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology. before we go any further let's remind people that you are open here at the factory and you have been open all this time and business is really good and you'd still want to invite people in you know the factory has been doing good and even this uh, thing going in town and all over the world uh, we appreciate it, all the people from Cash Valley supporting all of these months and all these years but this last month has been harder but we're still here and we don't plan to go anywhere. Right. Well, so you've been here a long, long time. Not you personally, but the factory's been here for decades, really. Yeah, you know, I've been here for 28 years, so, right. so that's a here. long yeah. time. Yeah. But I'm still happy to do my job and I still enjoy it. And I appreciate the whole people of Cash Valley and out of Cash Valley to support the factory and thanks to, and hopefully we do the best we can. And actually, we want to offer special for the people following in the Cash Valley channel. Okay. We're going to give it a free nachos when they buy a large pizza. They just got to mention to us and say, we hear they are in the Cash Valley channel and you owe us a nacho. And we will honor the offer anytime. And look at that deliciousness that they're going to get right here. A free nacho. So anybody following the Valley channel, you come in, you say, we saw this ad on the Valley channel and we'd like to claim the free nachos because they're not going to get it, are they? Unless they mention the ad. That's correct. Yeah, if they don't mention, we don't can give it to anybody. But if you mention we sign you, say we're going to give you a free nacho. You earn your nachos right there, automatic. <laughs> 
and there they are. So good looking. Um, tell us a little bit about other things that have been going on. You, I mean, you're, you're busy here all the time. You have certain nights, don't you, that you do things on? You know, we have a like Monday night special for the families to come. Yeah. You know, they get a couple of drinks for free when they come on Monday nights. And we have a Wednesday night for the college kids and people want to get a little bit out of this the stress relief we call it. We have a dollar drop and a four dollar nachos and I think that's a pretty good way to the kids to go out of the campus for a couple hours and study and come enjoy a good time to the factory. Definitely. Tell us where we are Fernando and how we can find you guys. Uh, we're located in 119 South Main in the basement. So anytime we open seven days a week from 11 to 11 or on the weekends 11 to midnight and when the game's on, we stay open as long as we need and people knows me, if you call me later and I'm still here, yeah. I'm still going to make you food. Yeah, because you do support local local sports, right? Yeah, you know, I support, you know, like Logan High, Mount Cray, Skyview, Race Line, yeah. Green Canyon, you know, the Aggies. After the games, a lot of people come and that's how we stay in business, yeah. just by the local people supporting me, so I'm happy to do what I do. Well, definitely a local institution that we're all really glad you're still here. And um, you're right here on Main Street, you can't miss it, it says the factory right outside here. Um, come on down, claim your free nachos, because it doesn't get much better than free nachos, especially here at the factory. Thanks so much, Fernando. Oh, well, thank you, and I appreciate you guys for all the support for all these years, and hopefully we'll be here for a long time. You will. Thank you, I appreciate it. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, peace of mind. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. The Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years. Halftime winding down in North Logan and Ridgeline leads Green Canyon 17 to nothing as we await the start of the second half. Eric Olson along with you here in North Logan. It's homecoming, it's senior night. And Ridgeline not being very uh, very good guests as they've jumped out to that 17 nothing lead. Green Canyon had a chance near the end of the half. So they got the ball all the way down to the six yard line. Then they brought the field goal team out. They looked like they were gonna go for it. Then they took a timeout, talked about it, brought the field goal team out. And then on the field goal, it was just strange. Everybody kind of was looking over the sideline. The ball got snapped and everybody just kind of stood there. And then Green Canyon started to run the play like it was maybe a fake or something. I don't know if it was a fake or if it was just some confusion. And once the ball snapped, you can't call timeout. And uh, they grabbed the, the holder who was trying to make something happen, threw him down for a 22 yard loss. And, and Ridgeline took over and marched it down and kicked a 30 yard field goal with one second left in the first half. And that's where we stand. Green Canyon with 60 yards rushing, 53 yards passing, and 113 total yards. 44 yards on 10 carries for Peterson to lead the way. Stewart had two catches for 25 yards. Lundeen was 5 of 11 for 53 yards. Ridgeline, 59 yards on the ground, 140 through the air for 199 total yards in the first half. White, 12 carries, 59 yards. 
Cox was 11 of 17, 140 yards and two scores. Webb is number one target, five catches, 90 yards, two touchdowns for the senior. So Green Canyon gets the ball to start the second half, trailing 17-0. Big possession to start this uh, second half. See if they can set some sort of tempo because it was Ridgeline that was dictating everything in the first. Compton drops it, has to reach down and pick it up. Heads for the far side, has some blockers. Runs through a bunch of Riverhawks on his way out to the 40 yard line before he's finally hauled down. That one looked like it had disaster written all over it as Compton dropped it right at the one yard line, had to reach down and pick it up and then get running. But everybody had converged on him and he was able to bounce it outside to his left. Green Canyon, pretty good fielding, field position to start this second half. Lundeen's gonna hand it off to Peterson. Four yards as Ridgeline in that first half, they had a th three down linemen. They, that's really their base, but they would only send three on passing plays after Lundeen, trying to just hem him in, keep him in the pocket. They'd come up field and just kind of, the, the nose tackle would kind of sit. Lundeen didn't do a ton of damage with his feet. 31 yards as he carries here. And he picks up a couple before they finally push him back. And we saw a couple of big pile pushes in the first half where Lundeen or Peterson were in the middle of a big pile and they just kept churning and picked up good yardage. Green Canyon actually had 82 yards rushing in that first half, but you had to subtract 22 off the, off the loss on that field goal attempt. So they have been able to run the ball. They run it again and pick up two and they're gonna be short of the first down. Lundin with that read option, he looks, sees what the end is doing, that end is, if he's crashing down, he keeps it. If he's coming up field, then he hands off. He, he hands it off, it's fourth and two. Green Canyon is three of eight on third downs. Curtis and Regan were kind of late getting the play, it looked like, because they're going to motion Peterson out. Lundin fakes the little screen and keeps it himself and picks up four on fourth and two. So they move the sticks, and now they're two for two on fourth down. Green Canyon in Ridgeline territory again. They've got no points to show for it. If they've been in there in Ridgeline territory two or three times. Another good first down run as they stay ahead of the sticks. Pick up six with Peterson. 54 yards now for Peterson. And as a team, they're now at back up to that close, getting close to 100 as a team. Christy Anson with the give, and he loses a yard. Third and six. Ball at the Ridgeline 44 with 8.45 to play in this third quarter. Lundin unloads. Tosses it over the middle to Stewart. Stewart picks up seven on third down and six. For Stewart, that's his third grab, 32 yards. Lundin's now six of 12 for 60 yards. He was over 300 last week. Like I said, they're dropping eight, making it tough on him. He's gonna keep nowhere to go with it. Now he finds somebody, Regan's wide open. Regan's inside the 20, down to the 18 yard line, 19 yards. Regan. 
Regan with his second grab of the night. He's their number one receiver. 32 catches, 458 yards, and six touchdowns. Lundin's going to keep it. And he's met at the 10 after a gain of three. For the second straight possession, Green Canyon's been able to march downfield on Ridgeline. They've yet to put any points on the board. Design quarterback keep on the draw. He reaches out for the five. They're going to spot him just short of it. Gain of four, and it's going to be third and short. Third and about two at the seven yard, just outside the six. Right out the six. Now the official steps over there. Guy I'm looking at on the sideline. Lundin's going to pitch it out to Christiansen. Christiansen looking for the goal line. He's going to be just short. He's at the two. Four yards for Christiansen. And they're getting excited here in North Logan. As the Wolves are looking for a touchdown as they load it up in the backfield. First and goal at the two. Lundin being pushed into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Canyon. Jake Lundin. Sixty yards. And it took five minutes and five seconds. PAT's good at 17 to seven with 6.55 to play in the third. Ridgeline still on top. Seventeen seven Ridgeline on top. Six fifty five to play in the third. A twelve play, five minute, five second drive by Green Canyon to start the second half. They converted on fourth down. They converted a couple of third downs. And Ridgeline's back in it. Or excuse me, Green Canyon's back in it. Ridgeline's always been in it. They've been on top the whole game. But now it's a 10-point ball game. And the Ridgeline offense will get a chance to take the field for the first time in, well, a long time. Just over half an hour since the Ridgeline offense has been on the field in real time. The half ended around 8 o'clock, and they got off the field shortly before that, after their field goal. And that long homecoming halftime. And they send Webb in motion. Cox is going to roll to his right, hits DeMooney. DeMooney hauls it in, makes one man miss. And leans forward for eight. Mooney with his second catch of the night. Oh, Webb to this side. Press man as they give inside to White. White leaps over a tackler, spins off another tackle attempt. He's off to the races. Regan chasing him down, but not until he's inside the 30-yard line. Good time. 
43 yards for Noah White. <laughs> 102 yards now for White on 13 carries. Green Canyon looked like they had him stopped and then he spun off the tackle and bounced it to the outside. Cox with a lot of time. He's got two receivers down as they clear out. Then he looks for Simmons breaking late and he overthrows him second down. And two receivers and they were working their way from right to left and then Simmons broke right, kind of on that corner route. Cox had enough time to wait for all of that to unfold. But he couldn't find anybody. Webb in motion. Cox has nobody over the middle as Green Canyon's there. They see what was trying to happen there, what Ridgeline was trying to get going. And Cox taken down after he runs out of bounds. And the Ridgeline sideline, everybody runs over there. They didn't like it, no flags. It's gonna be third down after a five yard game. Four yards rushing on three attempts for Cox. He was sacked once. Ridgeline is four of six on third down in the first half. And on those two, they didn't get the first down. They converted on fourth down. Two of their third downs came on penalty. Oh, nothing for DeMooney. They tried the little inside give. It's Curtis, or excuse me, Stewart limps off the field. No, that's Curtis. And DeMooney loses a couple. And it's going to be a 40, not a 44-yard attempt for Murdoch with 524 to play in the third quarter. Good grab by the holder. Plenty of leg for Murdoch. He's got it. Right down the middle, 20 to 7, with 515 to play in the third. Ridgeline extends their lead. Line got a 40 plus yard run from Noah White to set him up in pretty good field position, but they couldn't take advantage by putting the ball in the end zone. But they end up getting three on the 44 yard field goal by Murdoch. And for Green Canyon, they got to feel all right about that. They gave up the big run and looked like Ridge Line might be marching in for six more. And Green Canyon bowed up and held them to a field goal. So Lundeen back on the field, 48 yards rushing and a touchdown on 14 carries. He scored their only touchdown. And here's Peterson. Peterson finding a seam for 12. Six, six yards on 13 carries for Peterson. Green Canyon is 
staying committed to that running game. That's 27, 31, 31 rushing attempts for Green Canyon against 12, 13 passes. Here's number 32 as Peterson bounces to the outside again and picks up six. He's got 72 yards on 14 carries. Thirty-two rush rushes and twelve passing attempts for Green Canyon tonight. Under four and a half to play in the third. They're gonna run it again. Getting Peterson into a little groove. He picks up a couple. It's gonna be third and two. Third down's been a problem for Green Canyon. They're five of 11. They have converted twice on fourth down. It's third and two. They're gonna give it again. Somebody got into the backfield to trip up Peterson. And he's gonna be stopped short. He needed two, he got one. It was Willem Booth that got into the backfield to trip up Peterson and stopped him short. Now they've got that big jumbo package in there with three guys in the backfield behind Lundin where they just push him. Lundin falls forward. Looks like he's at the sticks. Let's see, he is. First down. Needed one, he got one and a half. So now Green Canyon's three for three on fourth down tonight. Lundin's gonna keep it. Got a seam, he's got eight yards. Green Canyon's committed to that rush now. They rushed it 20 times in the first half. They've rushed it 14 times here as this one's Incomplete. They've rushed it 14 times here in the third quarter. Third and two. Ridge line's got four, now five up. And the two linebackers have crept up there as well. See if they try to look for something over the middle with a little quick hitter. Lundin fakes the pitch, and he's grabbed in the backfield, falls forward for a yard. It's fourth and a yard. Green Canyon will go for it, and they'll probably bring in that heavy formation again. It's fourth and a yard. It's a full yard. They do have that heavy formation. Lundin keeps, they push him. And he's flung down right at the line to gain. And they're giving it to him. First down. 60 yards on 18 carries now for Lundin. And four for four now on fourth down for Green Canyon with two minutes to play. 2.02 left and the full moon coming up over the mountain behind the stadium. Beautiful. That means crazy stuff's going to happen now. Crazy! We get two moons, two moons this this uh, this month. We get one a full moon at Halloween. Two full moons this month. Lundin fakes the pitch, and Booth is there to take him down, along with Murdoch. Loss of a yard, and they celebrate that because it's been hard getting Lundin on the turf tonight. Second and 11 as we approach the one minute mark of this third quarter.
three-man rush. Lundin's going to throw. Throws underneath, and they're going to call P.I. Or defensive hold, one or the other. They got there a little early on Baker. If they call P.I., it's a 15-yarder. It's going to take them down inside the 35-yard line. Last score we had, Skyview was leading Logan 14-3. Still no score out of that Bear River Mountain Crest game. Pass interference, so that's going to be 15. For Ridgeline, their second penalty. Two penalties on Green Canyon, and it's been a mercifully laundry-free game. It's 28-3 now, Logan in the fourth, or Skyview over Logan in the fourth. Here's the throw to Stewart. Stewart's inside the 20. 15 yards on the quick hitter. Lundeen to Stewart. Stewart's becoming a, a favorite. Favorite target. Four for 47 for Stewart. Lundeen's at 94 yards now. He's 8 of 15. They run the ball again on first down and pick up about four. Peterson's up to 79 yards. Green Canyon has dominated time of possession here in this quarter. As we're down to 20 seconds to play in the third. And they're at the ridge line, 15 yard line. Second and seven. They pull the guard, they give to Peterson. Peterson, somebody came flashing in from the right side. I think it was Booth, and Peterson kind of tried to avoid him and lost his footing a little bit. And he went down right at the line of scrimmage. That's the final play of the third quarter. It's going to be third down and seven for Green Canyon on the 15-yard line of Ridgeline when we come back. Back at Green Canyon High School, Eric Wilson along with you as it's 20 to seven, Ridgeline, but Green Canyon driving again at the Ridgeline 15 yard line. Green Canyon had the ball, they ran 24 plays in that third quarter. Ridgeline ran five offensive plays in the third. The Ridgeline defense might be getting a little tired. It's funny, that can, that can work even on the high school level when kids go both ways and you always wonder, why doesn't the offense get tired? But it's always the defense that gets tired. And if the Ridgeline defense is tired, they've got a right to be. 24 plays they've had to defend. Here in this, in that third quarter. Lundin has to reverse out, finds his man, Baker. Baker inside the five, down to the pylon. Down to the one yard line. Baker's second grab of the night, he's got 21 yards. Nine of 16 for 108 yards now for Lundin. And it's first and goal. They're gonna say he went out of bounds at the four. So 10 yards for Baker. Lundin gonna give it to Peterson. Peyton Knowles is in there. Says nothing doing. Loss of a yard. 
Green Canyon punches this in. This game becomes very, very interesting. You know, it's been interesting. Even though, even though Ridgeline's had a double-digit lead most of this game, you know, Green Canyon, it just feels like it's a closer game than it actually is. Lundin unloads, and it's incomplete. Lundin running to the short side of the field. They just ran out of field. Now it's third and goal from just outside the five-yard line. Seven of 15 on third down, but four for four on fourth down. Ridgeline rushing three, Lundin throws it out into the flat. Stewart to the pylon, fourth down. Fourth and goal at the one. You know, they, they're down 13. They need a field goal in here somewhere, maybe. But here's that heavy formation again. It's worked every time. And it's going to work again. Touchdown. Lundin keeps for one and a touchdown. Back at that and said, well, you need a field goal in here somewhere. No, they needed two touchdowns. They were down by 13. Punch that PAT in. And now they're down by six. 20 to 14. New ball game in North Logan. 10.40 to play in the ball game. Ridgeline hanging on to a six-point lead. Vehicle won't start. We can fix that. Not running right? We can fix that. Won't stop? We can fix that. Auto Evolution. Honest service at a fair price on Airport Road. Back at Green Canyon. Green Canyon pulls to within six after Lundin's second touchdown of the second half, second touchdown run of the second half. It's 20 to 14, Ridgeline. Kickoff coming. It's out of bounds and there's the flag, which means Ridgeline will get good starting position to start this drive. Lundin up to 60 yards rushing on 20 carries. That's not a very gaudy average. It's three yards per carry. He averages closer to six on the season. Peterson with 18 carries and 78 yards. So in the second half, this is the sixth play offensively of the second half for Ridgeline. Whoa! Cox is taken down. He throws this one away. Incomplete. And let's see if they call intentional grounding. The official's not even thinking about it. He's saying. Now they're taking the ball way back there. If it's incomplete, it's got to be up at the back of the line of scrimmage, and that's what they're doing. Boy, that could have easily been intentional grounding. Sixth play of the second half for Ridgeline. Green Canyons run 29 plays in this half. That's Cox's first pass of the second half. I'll check that. It's his third. They're going to give it to White. 
White picks his way for a yard. Third down and nine. Four of seven on third downs, two of two on fourth downs. And Momentum is wearing a black jersey right now. Somebody's moving for Ridgeline. Somebody wasn't set. They had a guy moving. The ball was snapped. And Ridgeline all out of sorts on this possession. So it's going to be third and 14. The Ridgeline only their third penalty of the evening. Green Canyon has two. 10-11 to play in this ball game. This drive hasn't taken any time off the clock. It started with 10:40. We've taken 30 seconds off the clock. Now the clock starts after the penalty. Third and 14. They run the throwback. They've got everybody out that way, out coming the other way. They needed 14. They got five. Webb. Green Canyon's forced a punt, and they are fired up. Three and out for Ridgeline. It's their first three and out of the ball game. Fourth and eight. Murdoch gets off a good one. Decide to pick it up, Green Canyon does. And Curtis takes it up to about the 22. And Green Canyon trots the offense back out there. 29 plays they've run in this second half to eight for Ridgeline offensively. Well, it might be a tired Ridgeline defense. A touchdown on an extra point gives Green Canyon the lead. Peterson slips one tackle, and then he's pushed back. Murdoch had a hold of him in the backfield, and he gets away and picks up a couple. Of those 29 plays, 30 now, 22 of them have been runs. Here's another one. Four yards for Peterson. He's up to 84 yards rushing. That's his 20th carry. So he's averaging just over four yards a carry. And it's now third down. Four. We're going to give it to Peterson. Peterson, nothing. Right back to the line of scrimmage, and now Green Canyon. Fourth and four, this far, this deep into your own territory. I don't know if you roll the dice here. Still a lot of time left in the ball game. See what Coach Ander does. He's still got the offense out there. Oh, it's, they gave him a yard or two, so it's fourth and about two and a half. Big play. Lundin's going to keep. Lundin cuts it back. Still on his feet. He's got the first down. He needed two and a half. He got four. Five for five on fourth down now for Green Canyon. Seven twenty to play in the ball game. A six-point Ridgeline lead. Green Canyon with a new set of downs at the 29-yard line. Their own 29-yard line. Did I say 29? I meant 34. Numbers are hard. Lundin in trouble. Down he goes. Sacked for the first time tonight. He loses four. Big 
first time Ridgeline's been able to sack him tonight. Oh, they've gotten to him. It's the first time they've got him on the ground behind the line of scrimmage. He's going to throw now. It's not there. And they go up top. Webb's there. Lundin left it a little short, and Webb comes up with it. Ridgeline with the takeaway. Lundin looked like he was going over the middle and they ran the go on the outside. Lundin turns, unloads it, and he leaves it a little bit short. And Webb was there with his sure hands to haul it in. The first turnover of the ball game goes Ridgeline's way. Ridgeline, their 10th interception of the season with 6.26 to play. Ridgeline looking to put this ball game away. They lead by six. Green Canyon defensively needs another stop. Here's the give to White. White bounces to the outside and steps out of bounds as he steps across the 40 to about the 42. Gain of three. He's got 106 yards on 15 carries. So back-to-back 100-yard games by Noah White. Had 167 last week. Cox keeps, looks over the middle, has his man. It's Harris. Harris needed seven. He got eight. Harris with his first grab of the night. Cox is 14 of 22, 161 yards and two scores. Ball right at midfield. The clock runs with six minutes to play. A six point Ridgeline lead. Green Canyon's played well defensively here in this second half. They're looking for another stop. DeMooney around the end's got some opening. Into the secondary before he's battered down at the 35 yard line. 15 yards for the BYU commit. Stack formation here on this near side. They look at DeMooney. They go downfield to Webb, wide open. Boom, 35 yards. That could be the dagger. Cox has now thrown three touchdowns, all of them to Webb. Webb with a hat trick. I guess Cox gets one too. 196 yards, 18 and 23. And they're gonna go for two. Webb in motion. Cox unloads, two points. Easy does it as Murdoch hauls it in. 5.28 to play. Green Canyon in a bad spot when we come back. So, you bought your computer from one of those big box stores, or online, and now it's really slow, or just not working right. Copies acquired. PCs Unlimited can fix it. Fixing computers is what we do, and we've been doing it for over 20 years. Service, repair, diagnostics, networking, upgrades, system and data recovery, all your computer needs. Our prices are low, and our customer service is the best. You won't get help from the big box, or online. Come see the professionals at PCs Unlimited. Huge drive for Ridgeline. They may have just put this ball game away. They're now up by 14, capped by a 35 yard touchdown toss from Caden Cox to Webb. Webb's third touchdown reception of the night. 
This has been a good ball game. We'll see if Ridgeline has an answer. Jackson Curtis comes to the sideline, and he doesn't look like he feels too good. Marie Canyon running out of time. 5.28 to go. They don't have time for a 12-play drive that takes five minutes. They're down two scores, and their first attempt falls incomplete. And Stewart couldn't get there. 42-3 at the end of the third. Skyview all over. Logan, that was a close game at the half. Logan hung in there, and then Skyview stepping on the pedal here in this second half. Two-score game in this one. Over the middle, Stewart hauls it in. Stewart in the clear. Stewart hurdles over would-be tackler. He's down inside the 40-yard line. 41 yards. Stewart, six catches, 92 yards. Lundeen, 11 of 20 for 153. Five minutes to play in the game. Green Canyon down two touchdowns and two extra points. They fake the screen one way, look back the other way to the sideline. And it's out of bounds and incomplete. Murdoch and Lundeen are having a chat in the backfield. Hey, who are you taking to homecoming, says Murdoch. Lundeen mentions the name of a young lady. And Murdoch says, cool. And now a flag is thrown. And Murdoch puts his arms up, shrugs his shoulders like, what? And it looks like we might get an unsportsman. Like, I wonder, he must have said something. He had walked away from Lundeen and was back over on his side of the... His side of the line of scrimmage, Lundeen wasn't anywhere near him. Murdoch wasn't really in, near anybody. So I don't know if they're calling on him or somebody else, but Murdoch was the one that threw his hands in the air. Like, what? Let's see. An ineligible man downfield. And they called that a long time after the play. So for whatever reason, no wonder Murdoch said, what? <laughs> Looked like he was just having some friendly banter there. And it's on Green Canyon, their third penalty of the night. Lundeen over the middle has got Stewart again. Stewart wrapped up, but not until he gets first down yardage. He's got another 15. Hundred and seven yards now for Stewart. The clock stops until they set the ball. Now it starts with 4.36 to play in the ball game and a 28-14 Ridgeline lead, but Green Canyon marching. Over the top they go and there's flags. Looks like maybe they held the receiver coming out of his break. See what the call is. I haven't seen the call yet. It's because he hasn't given it. Here he comes. And it's against Ridgeline. And it's a hold on Ridgeline. And it's a 10 yard penalty. Ridgeline, four penalties, 40 yards. Green Canyon three for 35. Pretty even in those categories. 4.29 to play in the game. Lundeen, lots of time. Now he's going to run. Picks up a block. Heading for the 10 yard line. Flags fly as Lundeen works his way down to the two. And we got flags coming in from everywhere. Back at about the 12. Booth was down on one knee. Could be a block in the back or a hold. Let's see. And that would negate a nice run by Lundeen. 
Would have been goal to go with 4.18 to play in the ball game. Personal foul. No, look, maybe a, I don't know if it was a chop block. I didn't see what he said. I saw the personal foul, then what did No, it looked like he went to the head. And that's against the offense. That's 15 yards. That's a big one. Although it happened 10 yards downfield. Not quite 10 yards downfield, but still. The Green Canyon first down now at the 28. Instead of first and goal, it's first and about 16, 17 at the 28. Ball's on the turf. Lundin picks it up. Knowles and a couple other River Hawks are there to throw him down for a two-yard loss. It's been a, this has been a uh, promising drive for Green Canyon, but it's coming unraveled here. And the clock keeps running. They need two scores. They look like they had goal to go inside the three with over four minutes left, and instead it's a big penalty. Now Lundin looking. Lundin hangs in, underneath, has a man inside the 10, inside the five goes Curtis. Out of the two yard line, 28 yards. Thirty-five yards on two catches for Curtis, first and goal at the two. Three and a half to play in this ball game. Green Canyon needs two touchdowns. They missed Baker in the end zone. Second down. You have Lundeen keep it and kind of work his way down the line of scrimmage and you know hoping that. The linebacker, somebody commits to come up to stop the run, and then they slip Baker back in behind him, and Baker had slipped back there, and Lundin missed him. Lundin is 12 of 23, 196 yards. Stewart to the right, Regan to the left, and one other receiver. It's Curtis, way out. See if they run some kind of slant. They better hurry and snap it. Green Canyon's gonna need a timeout and coach, coach Hunter. He does that coach thing, where he just strides out purposefully, puts his hands up in the air, and goes, what is going on? You guys, saying it through clenched teeth, you guys. Timeout Green Canyon. They want to keep as many of their timeouts as they can and try to preserve some time, get the ball back because they need two scores. If they score, even if they score on this next play, you know, you're looking at about three minutes and 20 seconds left, and they're going to have to stop Ridgeline and force Ridgeline to punt. And there's uh, easier things to do in life than that. Although well, they've done a pretty good job on Ridgeline here in this second half. Bear River beats Mountain Crest 21-0. That score was 0-0 at the half. So Bear River getting the region win, and Mountain Crest remains winless in region. Lundeen on second and goal from the two. He's going to keep it right up the middle. Puts his shoulder down. Let's see. Touchdown. Three twenty-two on the clock, and Gerber comes on for the PAT. <laughs> Gerber's kick up and good. 28-21 with 3.22 to play. Ridgeline leads Green Canyon playing defense when we come back. I love Anderson's 
because I know nothing about gardening, but they do, and they're more than happy to coach me through it and tell me what to do, and I'm so excited. My favorite things at Anderson are the flowers and oh, the decorations. I love those, especially at Christmas time. Twenty-eight, twenty-one, ridge line, three twenty-two to play. And a good ball game. I can't imagine that Green Canyon would kick an onside kick right here. And we're gonna see. They'll kick it away and play defense, but let's see. Nope, oh, Lundin's going to kick it high. Fair catch called for by Murdoch. That was smart. Murdoch waves his hand, calls for a fair catch, and then hauls it in. Smart, smart play by Murdoch. So Green Canyon didn't put it on the ground in that traditional onside, but they booted it up there, way up in the air, Lundin. And he runs, he throws, he can play, play some defense, he can kick. He sold some hot dogs at halftime. You can lube your car. Kid can do everything. Another pretty darn good quarterback right now on the other side is Cox. Downfield, man wide open, Strat Simmons. Simmons inside the 10, ball game. <laughs> 56 yards. Two hundred and fifty two yards and four touchdown passes for Caden Cox. And with three twelve to go in the game, that one probably puts it away. I'm calling ball game early, I know. But that one probably puts it away. We'll keep it right here since we were just barely took a break. One play. Fifty four yards. 56 yards, excuse me. Sixteen of twenty-four. Two hundred and fifty-two yards, four touchdowns for Caden Cox. Three to Webb, one to Simmons. Webb has seven catches for 130 yards. Simmons has four for ninety-two. And he was wide open. But Cox Rolled out, had plenty of time. Simmons just got free. Here's Curtis, coming to the near sideline. Picks up a block, turns the corner. Out of bounds, out near the 35. Just saw a funny thing happen out there. <laughs> Webb came on the field, he didn't have a helmet on. Jackson Olson, who's on the kickoff team, was running off the field. Webb took Olson's helmet, and helmet left, and Olson left without it. I don't know if we got a helmet problem or not. Lundeen looking underneath, incomplete. Second and 10, under three minutes to play in the game. 35-21, Ridgeline. Green Canyon fought back, but Ridgeline's answered every time. The 
throw to Baker out on the edge. He picks up 12. Lundin's gotten himself into a groove. He's got 208 yards passing. Three for 34 for Baker. Compton comes off the field for Green Canyon. Baker got out of bounds. Lundin tosses it downfield to Stewart, and Stewart kind of slow to get up. Stewart couldn't get there to it as it falls incomplete. Two forty seven to play. Lundine, as they just kind of ham him into the pocket, looking for Regan. Regan catches touchdown. Fifty four yards. First touchdown pass of the night for Lundeen. Three catches, 87 yards, and a touchdown for Regan. Lundeen, 262 yards and a touchdown. Gerber's kick through and good. 35-28, 2.39 to play in the ball game. You're watching a good one on the game of the week. Wow, what a fourth quarter this has been, huh? Ridgeline threw a touchdown pass with just over three minutes to play. I called game. I called ball game on that one. Green Canyon says, nuh uh. Onside kick. Ridgeline's got it. Boy, whoever caught that, they paid with all of their change and a few of their bills as well. Let's see who that was. I think it was Knowles. Man, he got walloped by Lundeen. The Ridgeline has the ball at the 50-yard line. Green Canyon has two timeouts left. We'll see if Ridgeline tries to bleed the clock or if they stay aggressive. The 2.38 to play. It was 17-0 at the half. Here's the give to White. White picks his way for five. White with 111 yards. 132 yards on the ground for Ridgeline, 252 in the air. 384 yards total. Ridgeline taking their time. Clock under two minutes. Seven point Ridgeline lead, Webb in motion. Give it to White, White waiting for an opening. White's going to be a couple yards short. It's third down. On the night, Ridgeline is four of eight on third down. Two for two on fourth down. And now Green Canyon takes one of their timeouts. So 
wild fourth quarter. Couple of field goals by Murdoch. Touchdown on a two point conversion for Ridgeline to get him to 35. Three touchdown pass, four touchdown passes for Cox. And then the two field goals and a two point conversion. That's how they get to 35. Lundeen's throwing a touchdown pass and he's run for three for Green Canyon. Big third down, third and two. Now they go in a heavy formation. They're going to give it right up the middle. And Harris picks up six. Good job up front by his line. He put two hands over that ball, and he had a head of steam going, and he blasted through that hole. Ball at the 36-yard line, and Green Canyon takes a timeout. I believe that's their last one. 1.43 to go in the ball game. That is Green Canyon's final timeout. One more first down for Ridgeline will do it. One hundred and thirty two yards rushing for Green Canyon, two hundred and sixty two yards passing, three hundred and ninety four total yards for Green Canyon to this point. For Ridgeline, they have one hundred and twenty eight yards rushing, two hundred and fifty two yards through the air, three hundred and eighty yards <laughs> for Ridgeline. Well, Green Canyon's actually outgained them. Green Canyon had the ball almost the entire third quarter. Cox is going to kind of mess around, and he's going to take a knee. I think they did the math over on the sideline, did Ridgeline, and they said, look, we can start taking a knee if we don't do it immediately and kind of mess around a little bit, and it ends up being a loss of about eight. Ridge lines gonna just take their time and wait for that back judge to start counting. And they're still in the gun there. And he's counting now. Cox takes a knee. It's third down. And Green Canyon can't stop the clock. Ridge line will have to snap it one more time. Well, Green Canyon came from 17 points down to get within seven on a couple of occasions. But Ridgeline answered when Green Canyon had pulled within a touchdown earlier. Ridgeline recovers an onside kick, gets a 56 yard touchdown pass. And that's your ball game. Ridgeline hangs on to win. 35-28 in a heck of a game at North Logan. We hope you enjoyed it. It's been a good one. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Valley Channel. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. Custom Fence Company, privacy, security, peace of mind. 
Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. KSM means music, music is all we do. The Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 30 years.